Not gonna lie, I didn't expect the Barbie wire portions of this episode to more so act like the B-plot, but hey, what we got, I did enjoy. Barbie Wire, aka Blitzo's sister, has been a character that's been subtly teased to us viewers since the very beginning of Hell of a Boss's runtime, even all the way back to the pilot. That lone poster advertising the amazing Imp Twins as circus performers in the IMP conference room to Verasica Mayday blatantly bringing up Barbie in her debut episode when she told Blitz Barbie's as high from rehab, that's all we really knew. Well, come to find out at the start of this episode, Barbie had been released from rehab months prior to Blitz sneaking into the facility on that day. I found it weird it was never really explained why he chose to go see her on this specific day though, since he had no idea she had been out of the facility for months at that point. That kind of implies he never visited her on a regular basis. Perhaps the incident with Stolas and Stryker prompted Bliss to check on other loved ones, but wouldn't it make sense to go see Stolas first if that was the case? Please just visit your boyfriend, buddy. We, we need to see that happen. <laughs> After the nurse there refuses to tell Blitz where Barbie is now, he goes on a mission trying to find any leads he can on his sister. Meanwhile, Moxie and Millie are tasked with a client who was killed at a summer camp, a job that these two take the lead on since Blitz is busy looking for Barbie. Moxie in particular wanting to take the lead on this case with Millie as backup. These two trying to find the camp counselor killer ended up being the main focus for the episode, and while I do agree it was nice to see Millie get some spotlight in particular, it felt weird seeing Moxie acting so bitter at all the attention she was receiving from the other campers. The whole thing was they disguised themselves to try to blend in so they could find the culprit, which resulted in Millie becoming super popular and Moxie being hated by basically everyone. In ways, a lot of these scenes reminded me of how the Blood Moon Festival went down when Stryker made his official debut. Like, he was just the star of, like, every, like, competition and Moxie was just getting rolled 24-7 with other people just giving him the dirty eye at that. So, clearly, this isn't really anything new with Moxie's character. He, he functions as comedic relief in some of these episodes more than any other main character in the show, so I get it. What did feel weird was how jealous and annoyed he got with all the attention Millie was getting. I was talking to my buddy Sarcastic Course before writing the script for this episode, and he'll probably end up saying this in one of his videos, but he said the way Moxie was acting felt like how Blitz would act if he was in Moxie's position instead, and I totally agree. And that would be a very in-character thing for someone like Blitz. This is a guy who grew up in show business and was being upstaged by better talent, even at a very young age, I Fizzarali. I'm sure those feelings are some of the worst feelings Blitz has had to deal with, so him getting upset at Millie or Moxie for getting tons more attention from humans than him would make more sense to me. Like, I get Moxie feels like doing this job as the leader is important to him, I get that, but why is something like this trumping a situation like what happened with he and his father. Millie was pretty much the sole reason Moxie was able to get out of that forced arranged marriage. Looking at both these situations on the surface as much as possible, wouldn't it make more sense on paper for Moxie to be mad at Millie for not allowing him to have the last laugh at Crimson as opposed to being mad when she got too much attention at his summer camp? It, this is more so a theory, if anything, since there wasn't enough said on the matter, but yeah, it just felt weird. Like, even from the get-go, Millie knew that Jimmy Counselor Kid was the target because of how sus he was acting, but because Moxie wanted to have the job done in some weird, specific way, she was nice enough to let him do his thing, and he still got mad at her. It's a strange activity, for sure, strange activity. It felt like something you'd see in a more episodic cartoon rather than a serialized one with proper continuity within the characters. He did realize his wrongdoings by the end, so there's that, but I feel like there shouldn't have been a wrongdoing like that in the first place, you know? Like I said Millie getting some screen time was very nice. I know this is something a lot of people have been waiting for for a while, so finally seeing it happen, I hope the diehard Millie fans are, you know, pleased. I mean, I, I liked it, but I mean, yeah. She had her moment, and it was solid. As for the Blitz and Barbie stuff, Blitz had to go around a bunch of different areas in hell interrogating people to find out where Barbie is. It turns out she got a job that involves moving loads of drugs in the human world. Coincidentally, this specific job was at the same camp Millie and Moxie were at. Blitz ended up using one of those Osmodian crystals Barbie's co-worker had to get to this camp. Which seems to imply that Barbie's employer is located in the Lust Ring, either working directly for Ozzy himself or someone close to him in the area. When Blitz and Moxie find Barbie, we learn that counselor kid that Millie suspected killed that other kid because he found out about Barbie's drug hoard, so he wanted to protect her, I guess. Barbie is not very happy to see Blitz at all, though, talking about how she hoped this job would get her away as far from Blitz as possible and remarking how he's fucked up her life enough already. So that begs the question, what actually happened between these two siblings to create such a one-sided disdain on Barbie's end? Clearly, they were still close as kids based on the pictures shown of their family or just the two of them with their mother. And based on how the two of them looked in the Imp Twin 
win posters, it's safe to assume whatever happened, happened when they were already grown adults, but likely before Blitz was working that balloon stand at Lululand. Initially, I had a mini theory that Fizz could have been the one to maybe come between the relationship, because with the exception of the poster, the only pictures shown with the two siblings were when they were kids, whereas Blitz and Fizz had a picture together as teenagers. I thought perhaps as time went on, Blitz stopped paying attention to Barbie and more to Fizz or something, but yeah, I think the poster on the wall debunks that, to be honest. It just makes me wonder if whatever Blitz did to push Barbie away is related in any way to how he and Fizz fell out. The timeline does seem to support the idea of that, at the very least. The said quote-unquote thing possibly serving as the catalyst to send Barbie down a path of substance abuse that would result in her being in rehab. I feel like this is further backed up by the fact of Barbie saying just because she's out of rehab now doesn't mean she wants anything to do with Blitz. Clearly, Blitz is trying to make some kind of amends here, which I will say is a very big step for his character. Obviously, his whole thing with Solus is still a big lingering issue, but I don't think it's necessarily wrong for Blitz to want to prioritize fixing a family member's relationship first before romantic or platonic ones. You could tell by the look in his eyes, he really wanted to help her too. But the fact that she shot him down makes me think she might not want to be around him because he could be a potential trigger for a relapse or something along those lines. Worried that if she were to spend time with her brother, it could just lead her down a dark path again. Forcing herself to start from scratch in a, another rehab facility all over. Obviously, none of this is explicitly stated, though. These are pretty loose statements on my end, but the interactions between the two siblings were kept to quite the minimum, unfortunately. I wasn't expecting to get a flashback of what really happened or anything like this in this episode, but it would have been nice if things were a little bit more specific as to why Barbie is holding so much disdain towards her brother. Though I suppose for someone like me who does a lot of these speculation type videos, that could be considered a bad thing at the same time, I guess. <laughs> it does beg the question how or if these two are going to fix their relationship now. Part of me thinks Blitz is not going to go out of the way to find her anymore after what she said to him before leaving, but at the same time, Blitz is still a bit of a loose cannon. We're talking about the guy who invited Stolas on a date for the exclusive purpose to spy on the M&Ms during their anniversary outing. There could easily be another episode where one of the plots is Blitz having another itch to find Barbie and make amends. On the other hand, I could see a situation where the two of them just coincidentally run into each other again, whether it be in hell or on the surface like this episode. Almost leaning more towards hell now, though, since she implied that her employer buddy-buddy dying means she's going to be out of the job in the lust ring. As a side note, didn't anyone else notice Blitz just never got mad at Barbie when she kept calling him by his original name? I wonder if he just lets it slide for the people he really loves and or family or something like that. I don't know. Overall, I enjoyed this episode. Definitely would have preferred some tweaks here and there with the M&M plotline, but all in all, it was a good time. This does make me wonder if Blitz is going to be reluctant to visit Stolas at all now because of the harsh rejection he got from his own sister, but at the same time, Stolas has the patience of a saint. When it comes to the events in the present day and or since the start of IMP days, Stolas has put up with more of Blitz's antics than anyone, yet he still sticks around because he genuinely caught feels. Although in ways it would make more sense for Blitz to make up with a family member first on his road to redemption, Stolas would definitely be an easier character to work out the kinks with, I think, especially since we the audience pretty much know everything about them all the way back to their first meeting. The same still cannot be said for characters like Barbie and Fizz. Man, I cannot wait to see Fizz again. Okay, keep that guy far away from me. You know, I heard if you don't hit the like and subscribe buttons on my channel, he's never gonna appear in another episode. Uh, my dad's second cousin works uh, for Spindle Horse, so you know, trust me on that one. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below. I would uh, no love to know your thoughts, but for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care, bye-bye. <laughs>